Hello and welcome to another episode of Modular in a Week. Another noise related circuit today we are going to make a sample and hold which to make it noise related is usually used in conjunction with noise and sampling and holding frequencies in a noise mass of sound which you just heard. Today we are going to make quite a simple module. It's made by Rene Schmitz, a really well-known guy in the SynthDIY community. He's made quite a lot of modules and contributions in the community. Uh, and we're going to make his Yash, yet another sample and hold, using the LF398 8-pin chip, which is actually a sample and hold chip. So Almost all the components are in this one, which makes the build very easy. Uh, we also need a very special kind of capacitor, uh, which is the almost the hardest part. This one is quite easy, but the, you really need that exact capacitor or else uh, the circuit doesn't work. Believe me, I've tried. I also did try to build another, a couple of other uh, simple sample and holds, but this one is the one that I got working uh, satisfactory. So let's just dive straight in and look at components, schematics, where I found it and how to build it. So the schematics today we find on uh, Rene Schmitz uh, homepage, schmitzbits.de. A very funny address there. Um, so on his page he has sample and hold where he in in very short terms he discusses uh, sample and hold and the some old variants or without the LF398 and then he has yet another sample and hold down here uh, which is his newer one and using the LF398. And this is the circuit. You can see it is super simple to build. Uh, and here is the one nanofarad styrene in parentheses. And if we want to learn more about this, there is another link, which is also in the description and in the spreadsheet uh, here. It goes to mysite.du.edu e total electric. Yeah. So this is JB Calver who writes quite a lot about sample and hold circuits. So here's one of those circuits using a JFET, I believe it is MPF 102. You can find many of those uh, on the internet. And then the LF398 circuit down here. So here's the test circuit. And in this text he describes uh, very much what's, uh, why you need that uh, specific polypropylene uh, capacitor. So it's an interesting read if you want to know how the sample and hold works. And in the components list we can see that this costs around seven or a maximum of seven dollars. There's 21 components, including the three jacks, one pot and one switch. Uh, so again, a very easy build. And I really recommend that you build at least one. And looking at the panel, uh, this is also one of my earlier panels where I had a lot of space. So it's, uh, I believe it's a... Uh, 5 HP panel uh, could probably be stripped down to at least 3 or 4. So you got the rate knob, you got the rate LED, the on off for the internal trigger, the trig input, the source input and the output. And I'd say building this probably didn't take much more than one hour, maybe two. However, I didn't have the uh, 
polystyrene capacitor from the beginning so i spent quite a lot of time try trying to make it work with other uh, capacitors just to see if it would work with any of the ones i had lying around uh, and in that process i did find that it does make quite a cool sound even without the uh, capacitor without the sample and holding just doing something else so here is the module and so this one has an internal trig uh, an oscillator uh, which can go that slow and quite fast uh, and a switch so we can use the trig input or the internal we can use both in conjunction so we can use a an LFO for example and we can so here we use the LFO or we can use both the LFO and the internal trigger so we need a source and let's start with white noise and what we get out now is a CV output signal so we need to take the CV output in so this one it doesn't sound anything it's just different you can hear some clicks that's about it so we need to put this into a CV input on a VCO and or any other CV for that matter we can use this to control VCAs or VCFs or anything so now So now we are triggering the whatever signal is in the white mass of sound at the very at this very moment. noise again we can use other inputs red noise will give us more of the lower pitched voice uh, CVs and we can even so instead of using the the LFO for trig we can use it as a source and then it sounds like this It's not that chaotic anymore. Now it is a signal that is uh, sampled on a curve, so just going up and down. So by adjusting the rate of the sample and the and the input CV, we can get melodies. that it is following a curve
So as you can see this is a really versatile module to make control voltages randomly and kind of not randomly if using something else than noise. Um, so a very nice module to have around in your modular and it's almost a given in most modulars that you see out there. Uh, yeah, so that's the sample and hold and we have one more module uh, in the noise section of our modular in a week and that is the the true uh, random gate. So in the last episode I showed that you could make a random gate with the uh, digital noise module but this is a, a dedicated random gate module uh, which we'll look at in the next episode. I want to do a shout out to Ryan Larock, uh, my Patreon on five dollar level uh, and uh, yeah please consider becoming a Patreon. There's a bit more other kind of content over there, uh, not as polished as this is. Uh, I'm at the moment building, trying to motorize my my uh, movable shelves in the background here, uh, and I have a few discussions or not discussions, monologues about that uh, and things I've tried and stuff like that. Anyway, enough about that. Hope you like this video, that you like and subscribe and if you have a comment please leave it below and until next time take care, bye. So I want to show how, what uh, it sounds like when we remove the capacitor. So it doesn't lock the signal, it just... It's an interesting effect. This could be on a switch. So really random strange signals. <laughs>